Welcome to Hotlanta, a dazzling city where the sun sizzles on the pavement, the sun sparkles in the clear sky, and oh, let's start again. Welcome to Atlanta, home of the 2009 Hotlantic Coast Conference Tournament, featuring 12 dazzling teams, fans who sparkle. Number one, baby, Duke. No tires. And a game that is hot. Definitely hot. He'll take the drive down the lane, wrap around, slam, dunk. The teams in the 2009 ACC tournament were ready for the duel in the dome. Fortunately, it's a game that is also played indoors because the weather outside was for the most part unpleasant. Of course, ACC fans are anything but. We're having a great time. This is like family. It's family feud weekend. Everybody's got different teams they root for. Um, Carolina fans, we've got state fans, we've got Duke fans, we've got Virginia fans. It's just a lot of fun and a friendly rivalry. And we're having a great time just tailgating. We've been doing this for 23 years. We love it. We're going to keep doing it for 23 more as long as we live in. Those who traveled from Miami and Blacksburg didn't have to wait long to see their teams in action. Welcome to the ACC Tournament, the first round, the 56th annual ACC Tournament. The Hurricanes and the Hokies of Virginia Tech, two teams still very much alive in their hopes to reach the NCAA Tournament. All day! All day, every day, let's go! Eighth seed Virginia Tech, with its stars, A.D. Visayo and Malcolm Delaney, took the floor against all ACC guard Jack McClinton and ninth seed Miami. Rebounded Jaquite of Virginia Tech and the eighth seeded Hokies push it into the front court to Vasayo. He gets open for a three that's good and Tech's up to a quick 6-0 lead. Vasayo and Delaney, along with fellow Hokie Jeff Allen, stakes Virginia Tech to an early 10-point lead. Skip pass back on the right wing comes to Hudson. Underneath to Allen, banks it in right over McGowan. Another Visayo hoop stretched it to a dozen. The little teardrop of the right hand goes down, and the Hokies are up a dozen. Let's go, Pete! Let's go, Pete! McClinton and his teammates started hitting down the first half stretch. The Miami Storm included a sizzling 75-second three-point blitz. Here's McClinton for three and good for the right wing. Hurdle has it, moves it to Adrian Thomas, left up alone again for three. Yes, sir! He rings the bell from three-point range. To end the half down by just four. Somebody's season's going to stay alive in 20 minutes. But though Miami hit some entertaining second-half scores. Slam dunk with the right hand! McClinton gets away, left of the key, into the paint. One-handed runner up and good off the glass. Tough shot by Jack McClinton. Almost an impossible shot. Virginia Tech shot much more consistently. Here's Vasayo on the wing. Goes by Asbury. The teardrop with the right hand. Here's Vasayo going down the lane. Beat Dews. Leans in and connects from the free throw line. Front court. There's Vasayo. Zips the ball down low and Thompson dunks. A two-hand rim rattler. And eliminated the Hurricanes by 18 to move on to the Friday quarterfinals. I said before, finish. All right, we execute and we finish. That's one game. All right, this ain't deja vu. All right, same story, different ending. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Hokies on three. One, two, three. Boom. Tomorrow's where it's at. Got to double up. Yeah, that's, see, there's people here. Do you want to join us? What do you think about tomorrow? Go Heels, baby. We'll see what happens. We're friends now. 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 we you can't get through it without an upset. And if you're a fan of 12 seed Georgia Tech, the home team, which had suffered through a disappointing regular season, this was as good a time as any for a tournament surprise. Tech's opponent, five seed Clemson, had high hopes for the tourney, 
having reached the championship game in 08 and completed a season that included a win over Duke and two triumphs against the Jackets. So when Trevor Booker opened the scoring with a bang, the Tigers looked pretty scary. Of course, Georgia Tech's Lewis Clinch immediately answered from downtown. And then Zach Peacock. Zach Square shoots, jumper away, good. And Iman Shumpert added a pair of deuces. Top of the circle, Peacock. Backdoor cut, Shumpert reversed it up, scores and draws the foul from Jeray Grant. And Clinch hit again, sending the Jackets up eight. Inside out, reverse it. The Denver does get a guard. The Tigers hustled to catch up. But though Clemson pulled even on a KC Rivers jumper, and Trevor Booker's shot in the paint gave them the lead. 15 of the shot clock, bounces to a cutting. Booker goes inside, double clutches in the air, banks it up and in. The Jackets stayed close and knotted the score at the half. Foul line jumper, good, Amon Shumper. We will arrive at the half as we began, all even up. The second half belonged to a player who was overdue. Three-pointer left side, Lewis Clinch. Clinch has got 18. Out for much of the year, Lewis Clinch became a golden jacket for Tech. Iman looping it ahead. This is Clinch at the right. Lob, dunk, Gunny LaWall. Here's Clinch, three-pointer from the right is good over the top of Rivers. Pardon the pun, but it is safe to say that Lewis clinched the upset for Tech. Well, I thought they performed very well during the entire game, and particularly in the second half, they came out and kind of grabbed the game by the throat and really held us off. I thought they played with a uh, really nice hard edge. They were determined, they were as one. Um, we knew they were a good basketball team that was a little bit snake bitten this year, and, and they showed that. Next up for Tech, third seed, Florida State. You know, we got to come out and play Florida State. They're, they're a great team, and you know, we got to get ready for them. Containing a guy like Tony Douglas, uh, you know, is important for us. And, you know, it's going to be the same game plan uh, that we've had with guys like Tyrese Rice, Jack McClinton, uh, Oglesby. Really trying to limit his touches and, you know, basically playing a one-man spy on him. When he has the ball, everybody make sure they see him and make sure they contain him. The 10th seeded Wolfpack of NC State arrived at the Dome for Thursday's third game against number seven seed Maryland, hoping for an upset of their own. The rivalry between State and Maryland has long been a fan favorite. How about those chirps? How about those chirps? We're gonna, we're gonna get the usual, the usual Maryland performance in the tournament. All right, all this chatter here is all old news, okay? Here we go. Fear the turtle. Fear the turtle. Maryland played this team just a few short weeks ago. We could go something. Yeah. Everything went uh, all Maryland's way. But, you know, since then, a lot of noise coming out of that North Carolina State camp about how eager they are for a rematch. And we will see. NC State said it wanted a second chance against Maryland. Well, they get it on the big stage tonight at the Georgia Dome. It's been a long time. Oh, yeah, boys. And it's not going to end tonight. Coster left the lane to Fells. He penetrates, puts it up, got it. The pack grabbed the early momentum. Twin trays from Javier Gonzalez and C.J. Williams put State up by a dozen. Mays left wing to Horner, down low to Tracy Smith. Cross court to Williams for a jump shot. Good for three from the right side. Nice ball movement by the pack. Then with nine minutes to go in the half, Maryland's Eric Hayes found the range from downtown. Cliff Tucker added a three of his own. Wide open Tucker, yes, knocks down the three-pointer. And Dino Gregory's jumper completed the comeback. Fires the jumper, yes. Right. And we end the half the way we began, tied. Maryland 29, State 29, first half over. The score stayed close during the second half. Gonzalez is on it. He'll take Gonzalez to the hoop, throws it up and scores. Checked by Bowie, now to Gonzalez, left wing to Coster for three is in, he hits it. Vasquez 
Jumper doesn't take the shot. This is off instead to Hayes in the left wing, and he hits another three-pointer. Outside to Fells. Fake the shot now to Mays. Open, pulls the trigger for three. Oh. He rattles it in from left of the key. But Maryland had the final say. Got past his man and laid it off the glass, and the Terps regained the lead. Vasquez to Mosley on the right side. Hands it back to Gravis. He'll take the three. Yes! Big bucket right oh, there. Oh, big bucket is right. And when the dust had cleared, the Terps were on top. And the ball game is over. And Maryland keeps slim NCAA tournament hopes alive. We played hard the last 30 minutes of that game. You know how hard we played? We played hard, OK? Now, we're going we're to play better tomorrow night. Yes, sir. See, no, I'm serious. Not that we have to, but I mean, We'll make some shots that we missed tonight. I guarantee you, you know, you, you get used to it. So let's everybody focus on one thing. Get that win tomorrow. Yeah! 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 Three, one, two, three. Yeah! Thursday's finale pit rebuilding Virginia against Boston College, a team building an NCAA tournament resume. A win against the Cavaliers would surely push BC through to Brackettville. ACC Rookie of the Year, Sylvan Landisberg signaled a bright future for the Hoos. A deep right side on Landisberg, now for Deanna. Foul line Landisberg, jumper is good. So Landisberg hits the jumper, has six points, 21-15 BC with 10-11 to play in the half. And UVA hung tight for a while. Now lobs up for Deanna, who stuffs it down on the alley-oop. Oh, what a play. It was placed perfectly in the air by Calvin Baker. The court belonged to Rakim Sanders and the Eagles. Bob speed deflected, comes for Sanders. Sanders drives in, lays it up and in. Left block, good defense there by Roach, jumping in the steal. Down court, Sanders drives, lay it up and in and a foul. How about that? Steal in the pass? Sanders wants to go on Deani for the left block. Put it up around and in. Rakim Sanders has 11, 35, 25 BC, under a minute to play in the half. BC was up by a comfortable dozen at the half which sat well with one alone. Yeah, good start in the first half. I think, uh, you know, BC came out strong. Hopefully they can keep it going for the second half. I think, uh, you know, we've got a good team. Hopefully we can make a run during March. Manny Ice's team coasted to victory and a Friday night matchup with Duke. For Patty, gets free and flips it up around and in. BC the biggest lead, 15, and Dave Lato wants to talk it over. Timeout. But for Rice, lob pass Sanders, and he puts it up and in, 23 Sanders. And Virginia loses 76 to 63 and will end up the season here in the first round of the ACC tournament as Boston College has advanced on to face the number three seed Duke Blue Devils tomorrow night. Friday morning. And Seth Greenberg is on his way to work. He sits quietly as the bus drives through Atlanta. And when he does speak, it is in hushed tones. Smiling gently, he trades comments with a fellow commuter. You'd never guess that Greenberg is about to face the top team in the nation. It ain't about who we're playing against. It's not about the stage. It's about what we do. It's not about anything else but what we do. As far as what Virginia Tech does, nothing could be finer than beating Carolina. Oh, he's on three. One, two, three. Oh. At last year's tourney, Tech had come breathtakingly close to defeating the Heels. Then Tyler Hansbro did that shot and dance, and the Hokies went home. The last thing Virginia Tech wanted was a repeat performance. And yet, something about the game seemed eerily familiar. Perhaps because the Hokies moved ahead early. Into the lane, going to take it to the goal and a dish on the wing. Masayo fires and scores. A three-point goal for the senior from Puerto Rico. Delaney goes behind his back, gets a screen, fires and scores ahead of the key three ball for the sophomore from Baltimore. But Carolina stayed within striking distance. Got it to Drew. Drew trying to penetrate. Dropped it off to Ed Davis for the slam dunk. And as always, Hansbro was all over the court. A behind his back dribble. Off to Wayne Ellington. Jump shot. Good. Knocked up. Slapped around. Control Hansbro. In for the dunk. Tyler Hansbro with his second field goal. 
Here is Hansbro going to the baseline on the give and go to Wayne Ellington for a jumper. Tyler's two with 44 ticks left in the half, but the heels up by two. JT Thompson responded with a layup, plus foul. But the other Tyler had last say before the break. Larry Drew nearly lost the ball on the drive, feed Seller, layup good. So the Tar Heel down nine at one stage in the first half will go to the dressing room ahead. Tex A.D. Vasayo put on a bit of an exhibition early in the second half. Two Vasayo threes put the Hokies up by six. Gives it over to Vasayo. They leave him unguarded, and he buries the three-pointer. Danny Green got there late. Carolina scored inside to stay on the Hokies' heels. Ellington trying to work three against Vasayo. Goes to the baseline underneath. Fingertip roll. Good, and he's fouled. But down the stretch. Malcolm Delaney hit from downtown. Malcolm one on one with Drew. Pull up jumper in the air. Count it. It's a three point goal for the kid from Baltimore. And Vasayo made a layup to put the Hokies up by one with 52 seconds to go. Hokies lead 76 75. Vasayo's been magical here at the Georgia Dome. And then, like last year, Hansbro showed up again. Tyler's trick moved the Tar Heels to the Saturday semis and left Virginia Tech exhausted from some harrowing Hansbro deja vu. Speaking of texters, the hometown favorites were back, looking for upset number two. Fourth seed Florida State would not be easy to upend. All ACC guard Tony Douglas had led the talented Tallahassee club to a terrific 23-8 regular season mark. Many believed FSU was capable of taking its first ACC championship trophy. So few were surprised when the Seminoles opened up an eight-point lead early on. The ball screen said a little give and go thing. Reed couldn't get free. Underneath the ball goes. Durbin Kitchen lays it up with the left hand and scores. What did I find? The pass intended for Solomon will be 13 to 5. But the Yellow Jackets were not about to make it easy. Tex Ghani Lawal scored three times. High arcing kiss off the glass. Here is Miller. Bo taking it down. He will lob. Lawal will catch and lay it in. And the score was tied. Stung but unfazed. The Seminoles hit another zone and went up by double digits when Douglas sank a three. Even so, Georgia Tech's Lewis Clinch made a half-ending statement. And in this strange and streaky game, Clinch's score began a strange pattern. In the second half, Florida State would seemingly take control. Moving left to right, here's Tony Douglas on the wing. He drives baseline. Oh, he lays it up at Eddie with three defenders. Tony Douglas has 17. But then Clinch would hit from afar. Georgia Tech down seven. Clinch, deep three over Dulcas. Good. Lewis Clinch now heating up. 16 for Clinch. Douglas with the ball. He's given direction. Here's Oliver. Puts up the 15-foot shot. Good shot, Solomon Oliver. Down by six with eight and a half to go. Clinch scored again to have the FSU lead. Then fellow Jacket Alade Aminu followed up inside, and the Jackets were down by one. Another chance to tie. Wraps it down to Aminu. Alade softly off the glass and in. Tech to within one. Moments later, Zach Peacock's turnaround jumper flipped the lead to Georgia Tech. Get baseline. Put it up. High arcing shot is good, and Tech leads. And with 25 seconds left, the Seminoles seem stymied. Tony Douglas timeout. Use the last timeout. They had Tony triple T. 9.9 seconds. Here comes the ball to Luke Louts. Luke gets the ball to Derwin Kitchen. His layup is good, and he's fouled. Kitchen drives baseline with 7.7 .7 seconds to go. Derwin Kitchen's hoop pushed FSU into the tournament semifinals. <laughs> I love you, boy. Oh. You just hate me. Wake Forest entered the arena for Frantic Friday's third contest, hoping to win its first ACC tournament championship since 1996. The Deacon Nation was optimistic, 
with good reason. Second seed in Wake's terrific regular season had included wins over Carolina, Duke, and Florida State. Not to mention their quarterfinal opponent, Maryland. The Terps had played great ball in their Thursday win over NC State, but they were about to play their second game in 24 hours. By contrast, Wake was fresh and fully rested, but couldn't get on track. The Terps, in the meantime, were hitting everything. Dishes off inside, Milburn off the glass, nice speed, went off deflected, Adrian gets it back. Here's Neal off the glass, right side and scores. Down by six, the Deeks finally found the bucket. Alley -oop Clark into LD, and he hammers it down with two hands, perhaps that'll spark the Deeks. Clark gives to Aminu, finger roll from in front is good. Right down the middle of the lane, Al Farouk's first bucket. Here's Vasquez, wide open to the right wing, yes, with a three-pointer. But Maryland stayed ahead and left for the locker room five points ahead. If Wake appeared sluggish during the first half, they couldn't shake that feeling during the second half either. Lobs it in there, here's Chase. Being double teamed, ball on the floor, spins up to the shot, no good. Loose ball tipped around, being battled for, Maryland's got it. While Wake slept, Maryland's Sean Mosley enjoyed his court time. Sean Mosley drives for the hoop, lays it up and scores. Mosley, first field goal to Mosley. He'll fire the three, yes! Dave Neal and Gravis Vasquez joined in. Vasquez down low. Gets to the corner. He'll fire the three. Yes! That's that, man. Ice water. And all in all, it was a total Terp team triumph, which made Gary Williams proud. Maryland's semifinal foe would be the winner of the fourth game, Boston College or Duke. Let's go Duke. Let's go Duke. Coach K's Blue Devils had dominated ACC tournament play, winning seven of eight trophies between 1999 and 2006. But they had suffered through the last two tournaments, losing in the quarterfinals in 07 and then in the semis in 08. In other words, Blue Devil juniors Gerald Henderson, John Shire, and Lance Thomas had never been to the ACC championship game, let alone the winner's podium. Of course, third-seeded Duke wasn't thinking about that right now. First, there were the Eagles to contend with, which at the start seemed fairly easy. It went all Duke's way. Missed the lay and stopped back home by Lance Thomas. Ball in the rim to Zubak, hands it away to Singer. He'll go back down the left, spins down the lane for the easy finger roll lay-in. Down by nine early, the Eagles hit from the outside. Steep left sideline, Rice will take the long three. And hit it, nothing but the bottom of the net for Tyrese Rice. And consecutive layups by Josh Southern and Vico Paris gave the lead to BC. Kyle Singler responded with his own inside game. To Singler, down on the baseline, he goes double pumps, reverse lay-in goes for Kyle Singler. But Joe Trapani hit a tray. But Trapani left to the key for three, count it. BC 22, Duke 21. Rice struck gold at the buzzer. Rice has to go against Singler, the long shot is good by Tyrese Rice, drains the triple from the left wing. And the Eagles soared by seven at the break. Duke took the floor for the second half, knowing they had to improve their shooting. During the first 20 minutes against BC, the Devils were not hitting well from outside. But the second half was a different story. Three-pointer from the corner by Kyle Singler, and that makes it 29-34. Duke trails by five. John Shire's second three of the period put the Devils up by two. Rice quickly ended the Duke momentum, and the game moved into high gear. Four with three, head of the circle. Does he get it away? He just barely does. Put it up around, catches the rim and drops. Now throws a lob down inside. Singer got pushed out from under, but caught it anyway and laid it in. 
Trapani for three. It's short in the rebound, Raji. Raji put it up around. And in and a foul. What a play offensive rebound, Corey Raji. John Shire's three, but the Devils ahead by four. Here's Shire, turn around three from way downtown. Then Gerald Henderson hit to move the lead to seven. Deep three, Gerald Henderson nails it. But this is March, and BC kept the madness going. Duke returned the compliment via some Kyle Singler handiwork. Then with 90 seconds left, yet another three-pointer. This one from the Eagles' Biko Paris put BC back ahead. Paris with 15, we're tied at 63 with 129 to play in the game. Down by one with half a minute to go, Duke's Gerald Henderson turned the tables and came inside. 66-65 Blue Devils. Duke's D took care of the rest. Looks, 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 looks. Now throws it in, knocked away again, picked up by John Shire, and he is hemmed in and fouled. And the Blue Devils pushed through, ending Friday's marathon with a major league win. We start our annual tailgating review with a fond look at the 2001 tourney, the last time the Georgia Dome hosted the event. Pretty appealing, right? Well, here's what happened eight years later. Same city, same dome. But there were some hardcore troopers. We salute them, and we wouldn't mind eating their food. We're doing breakfast now, but uh, later on we'll have steak and bear burgers. <laughs> Maybe you like to have a certain team join in? You know, we got Virginia people here, we got Maryland people here, we got uh, Carolina, we got uh, Virginia Tech. We don't have many Duke people, so we don't holler too much for Duke. <laughs> Go Duke. It depends on your perspective. I ain't holding the Duke flag. Oh, come on, be a sport. Carolina and Duke, go Hill. <laughs> of course, that conversation is for another time. Today, Carolina is facing another program, one definitely that had something to prove. Now, obviously, they're an extremely talented team. There's no doubt about that. And as we try to move up the ladder, you know, we have to compete with people uh, of this caliber in order for us to, uh, to, to, to continue to keep moving up. So. Is a unique opportunity for us. Florida State's really tough. Tony Douglas, the outstanding player, uh, he's really tough to cover. We had a, we were lucky to win down there. Ty Lawson hit a shot, but time running out. We don't have him today. We're going to miss him. True. Ty Lawson, the ACC Player of the Year, was out with an injured toe, but All-American Tyler Hansbro has 10 healthy toes, and Hansbro hates to lose, especially this year. This is the last time. He's going to wear the Carolina uniform in the ACC tournament. It's a hard thing to think about. I've been so proud of Tyler. I mean, people are able to live their dreams, but Tyler's worked hard and he's been able to live his dream. Florida State struck first. Oliver backing in in the middle, turns, hooks over Hansbro, and gets the roll off the back of the rim. Knowles to run, two on two. Douglas gives the ball to Kitchens. Ball fake, Kitchen lays it in. And the Knowles lead six nothing. Great start. Then the heels got in the groove. Ellington drives on Louch, lays it up. Fingertip roll, and Carolina takes the lead at 10 to 8. Wayne Ellington struck three times from downtown. Jump shot taken, right wing. Ellington, good shot. Don't give him an open shot. It's 21 17. Here's Ellington. He'll give it a try. That's good. 26 to 21. And Hansbro scored inside to put the heels up by nine. With time waning in the half, Tony Douglas stepped up. Douglas dribbles, backs away, puts up a 15-footer. Good shot, and he's fouled. Fraser got him as he lots from the top of his gun. 32-27. Derwin Kitchens reverse layup six seconds before the buzzer got the Carolina lead to three at the break. And some smelled a seminal triumph. Who won this game? Oh, we're free wins games. All about the wins, baby. It's all about the wins. One could say that Kitchen got the Seminoles cooking in the second half. But it takes more than one Seminole to start a fire. Solomon Olaby's score and foul pushed Florida State ahead by five. 
Then Chris Singleton followed up, and the lead was seven. Singleton shot up and good. Chris Singleton's first basket, 45-40. One thing about Carolina, they don't ever give up. Now they try to go to Hansbro. Goes up in the air to control the basketball. Moves into the lane. Got it off to Ed Davis for the dunk. And it's 45 to 44. The Tar Heels threw everything at the Seminoles. But FSU responded. Out front, Tony dribbles by Frazier. Goes to the hoop, puts up the runner. Good shot, Tony, with a hand in his face. 64 60. Tony's got 25. Down four with five minutes to go. The heels' Wayne Ellington delivered. Frazier to the right side. Ellington shot challenge. Good shot with a hand in his face. It's a one point ball game. Two minutes to go. Seminoles by two, and Danny Green gets a steal. He can put Carolina ahead if he makes this one. It's up. Good. Carolina leads 70 to 69. With 15 seconds left, Derwin Kitchen steal and foul shots push the Seminole lead to three. Take it away. He gives the ball to Tony Douglas with 19 to go. Douglas will be double teamed. Gets the ball to Kitchen. Kitchen brings it down the court and he's fouled immediately by Frazier. With 15.7 seconds left. Triggers. Got it. Bullseye. Noel 73. Tar Heel 70. This time, the Tar Heel clutch shot for the tie didn't fall. Rebound won by the Tar Heel. Danny Green, three-point shot. It's no good. Oh, Knowles beat the Tar Heel. We play for the championship tomorrow. A historic win for Florida State. It, it feels good. <laughs> it really does feel good. But especially playing the ACC championship game. Florida State never been in that. You know, we, we made a mark that can't be erased. So let's, let's, let's continue to make that mark. And for Carolina, it meant a break from competing, a chance to rest up for the NCAA tournament. But for Tyler Hansbro, a loss is a loss. Yeah, we did lose. You know, I'm not really happy about it. Yeah, so I'm not really sure, you know, rest. We're college athletes. I mean, we'll be ready, you know. I'd rather be playing tomorrow. I mean. When Duke meets Maryland in the ACC tournament, sparks can fly. Recall the 2001 semifinal game, won by Duke at the last split second. Tip up and in by Nate James with 1.3 seconds left. A baseball pass to midcourt. Kitson fires at the buzzer, off the rim, and Duke wins it 84 to 82. Or the 2004 final. And it's all over. Maryland has won their first ACC tournament championship in 20 years. And they beat Duke. 95-87. This year's semifinal could turn on a simple factor. Would Duke, so reliant on outside shooting, find the hoop from the perimeter? And one of the Terrapins playing their third tournament game in three days. Would they have the energy to run a full 40 minutes alongside Duke? The turf sure seemed fresh. To Bowie. Bowie splits the paint, lays it up with the left hand, and scores. Did he turn on the Jets? Vasquez way out front with four seconds to go. Goes baseline, throws it off the glass, and scores with a second to go on the shot clock. After scoring only two of the game's first nine points, Duke's shooting sharpened. Ball is double team in the corner, finds Henderson, who finds Smith. Nolan stops, left of the key, fires it up good. Maryland's Gravis Vasquez continued his torrid tournament shooting. Into Vasquez, he forces one up and makes it. Nine of the Terp 18 belong to Vasquez. Down by three with five minutes left in the half, Duke's Kyle Singler launched a couple of threes. Maryland took back the lead with an Eric Hayes tray. Here's Hayes, fakes the three, resets, the player flies past him. Got Henderson up in the air, and Eric Hayes gets his first three. But there was John Shire with the final three of the half to give Duke a two-point edge. Deep, deep three for John Shire. Halftime, and the score is Duke 32 and Maryland 30. Back from the locker rooms, Sean Mosley tipped the advantage back to Maryland but the Turks were getting tired. Bowie in the right corner, Singler's on him. Here's Adrian, into the paint to Gregory. He throws it up too strong, no good. 
Duke kept going to the hole. With four seconds to shoot, Nolan Smith lost it, got it back, fired it, it just caught the rim. Up underneath, Williams got it back in. Shire spins, looks for some help, dives into the double team, loops it up, off the glass with a spin and in. And though Maryland kept up for a while, they started to lose step. Bravis throws it in the paint, rejected, gets his own missed shot back, and here comes Henderson back the other way. Duke promptly went on a 9-0 run. Over to Shire, open, three, got it! Henderson with a nice bounce pass, Shire flies for the lay-in! A perfect lead pass to John Shire, and they finish the fast break and take a nine-point lead at 52-43 with 6.45 to go. They closed the door on Maryland's tournament run and set the stage for the championship game. I look at it in their, through their eyes. You know, what an accomplishment it would be to win the championship of this conference this year. You know, basketball is a huge part of my life. It's a huge part of everybody's life in here. So, you know, it's, it's what we do. And, you know, we're really looking forward to, you know, winning a championship together. It's Championship Sunday, and we're taking the morning off. You're on your own until the tip. Oh. Oh. <laughs> welcome to the Georgia Dome! Hi! Like You're welcome! Welcome to the Georgia Dome! The Dome is going like to win. Duke! Duke. Duke. We hope you have a great time. Right. Go Devils! It's Championship Sunday at the Atlantic Coast Conference Basketball Tournament here at the Georgia Dome in Atlanta. The number three seed Duke Blue Devils take on the number four seed, the Seminoles of Florida State, making their first appearance in the championship game. You know, talk it up, Duke. Talk it up. Let's go. We got this. Great game yesterday. We're going to have a better game today. We're going to come out, play good defense, shoot the ball good, shoot the ball good from beyond the heart. It's going to be all us. Singor's going crazy. This is a team of destiny. Come on. Yeah, baby. Here we are in the Atlanta, Georgia Dome, trying to win our first ever ACC championship. Who knows? The planets may be in alignment. The stars may be in the right place. The sun may not come up today because it's raining outside, but I like our chances. And I think when you also look at the makeup of this game, I think Duke's got to make the three-point shot. I think kids like Shire and Singler have to make the three. If they're making the three, they're going to go home with the gold trophy. If they're not, Edge goes to Florida State. <laughs> Both teams look sharp in the early going. Tip control easily by Alibi and the Seminoles have it. We're underway. Solomon Alibi, he'll take Sigler to the hoop. He puts up the shot and is going to rattle and drop good. Three days in a row, the Seminoles score first, two nothing. Shire will take the three and make the three. Tony Douglas's three put FSU up by one. Douglas open three ball. Good. Knowles lead 11 to 9. Moments later, Gerald Henderson responded. And within the next few minutes, anyone wondering if Duke would be making their threes today no longer wondered. Goes toward the left side, back out front. Singler fires three, got it again! Oh my goodness, what a show we're seeing right now from Kyle Singler. Florida State Singleton hit a tray in the midst of the Duke barrage, but the Knolls struggled to keep pace. And when the smoke from the three-point attack cleared, Duke scored loudly again, this time from inside. Ducks by his man to the rack for the jam! There's the Nolan Smith we like to see taking the ball to the rack with a strong, strong finish, the one-handed dunk. Perhaps the most difficult half of their season ended with the Seminoles down by 14. Tony Douglas returned to the floor for the second half and made some noise. 
Duke just dribbles into the teeth of the defense, gives to Douglas. Douglas, three-point shot. Good shot, Tony. Boy, a shootout between Henderson and Henderson and Douglas. Now 42, 28. But louder even than Douglas was the sound of the tray net swishing on the other side. Now to Shire, got an open look, and buries a three. Give Florida State credit. They kept plugging away, hoping that Duke would cool off. It is Ryan Reed. He goes up for the layup and scores. 50-40 to score. Ryan Reed, second basket of the game. Dribble drive, Lops puts up a floater. Good! It should count. Luke Lops, a freshman from the left lane. But Duke continued to scorch inside and out. Ball down to the baseline. Gerald Henderson then elevates for the dunk. Down the horn to Smith. Back out front, Henderson. Right side, Shire. Elevates for the three and buries it. John Shire about three feet behind the three-point arc that time and nothing but net. The Blue Devils now up by 22, 65 to 43. Down the stretch of this final ACC tournament game, one of the finest players in Seminole history took a curtain call. Douglas will come out and get a standing ovation. What a great senior season he's had. The game and championship, though, belong to the Blue Devils. <laughs> who cut the nets and stormed the podium for the first time in three years. This one is, uh, is, is very dear to me because uh, of our junior class. They came in as freshmen without a junior and senior class ahead of them. And so to experience uh, a championship with those four juniors uh, makes me feel very, very good for them to be champion. Not the whole team, but especially the, that junior class. For the coach, his team, and the Duke faithful, it was a welcome return to the grandest of stages as ACC tournament champion.